I'm Rose McGee, and I am president and founder of Sweet Potato Comfort Pie, and I'm also a resident of Golden Valley, right out here in the community. But I have two remarkable young people with me, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves. I'm Mackenzie, and I'm 15, and I attend Benilte Margaret. All right, and this is... I'm Alice War. I'm 15, and I attend Girls Academy. You two kind of look alike. Any relation going on here? Yeah, this may be. Ah, yeah, okay. Well, thank you both for taking the time. And let's just have this little conversation about Juneteenth. You know, um, it was in 2021 that Juneteenth was passed as this big national holiday. And then in February of this year, 2023, the Minnesota state legislators made Minnesota um, uh, a holiday for Juneteenth as well. So now that everybody's starting to hear the word and they're getting the day off from work, what does that mean? What does that sound like to you? Have, have you ever even heard of Juneteenth? I have, I have. I heard of it as a day where um, black slaves were free, predominantly in Texas, especially on that day, June 19th. And I think a lot of people take the time off work to just take time to reflect and acknowledge their ancestors from the past and all the work and dedication they've put in mm -hmm. to be where we are today. You know what? I grew up in the South, in Tennessee. Went to an all-black elementary school, all-black high school, all-black church, all-black college, and I never heard of Juneteenth all those years until I graduated from college and moved to Denver, Colorado. So what I discovered was in Denver, Colorado, my black friends started having these, uh, they were getting all excited about the, the holiday they were getting ready to celebrate. And they kept calling it June something. And I said, June 10th, what's June 10th? And they said, it's not June 10th, Rose, it's Juneteenth. And that's when I first heard it and they explained it to me. So now what I also discovered was people who lived um, kind of on the, on the west side of our country, tend to migrate up from Texas into places like Colorado. So they brought that tradition with them. Whereas over there where I was in Tennessee, it just wasn't something that people had heard of so much. But when I moved to Minnesota and got here, the folks over on the north side were actually having Juneteenth Festival and Juneteenth Parade. And I thought, oh my goodness, even in Minnesota they commemorate it. So when, when do you remember ever hearing about Juneteenth? I think the first time I probably heard about Juneteenth was sixth grade. Oh. And I think that was because it was like my first time going to a private school. I've been in public school from kindergarten to fifth grade. Mm -hmm. So when I went to sixth grade, it was like predominantly white. And I think it was more of a thing that was like, oh, we acknowledge you, you know? Oh, so I've never we acknowledge you. <laughs> yeah. Ah. <laughs> so I think it was really just there to say like, oh, you know, like we support and like we're educated, mm -hmm. and that's really like the first time I heard about it. And then I also heard about it first off an of episode of Blackish. Oh, and what what was that like? <laughs> um, it was it was like kind of a musical type thing. It was yeah. one of my favorite episodes, and it just explains how like the slaves were like there are different emotions and how mm -hmm. they were hearing about it on the radio and just like oh is this real is this real you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And what about you? Yeah, I would say the first time I heard about Juneteenth was last year. I was working for Dr. Henderson at Dolores Works. It's a nonprofit, and I was actually a teacher assistant there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was hearing about it like the the music teacher there mm -hmm. taught the kids like a song about Juneteenth. Oh. And they yeah, they were like singing mm -hmm. and yeah, I just like that was like the first time I really heard about it and like okay. learned about it. Yeah. Okay. So you you heard about it and both of you kinda heard about it through school. So now what? Should there be more going on in school about this or is it fine the way it is or what do you think? Mm. I personally think, you know, it's fine. I, I mean, I think that, like, it should be taught more, like, in school and, like, history. Okay, in That's, history. Yeah, like, I feel like maybe, like, the last, like, week of, like, school, like, June, you know, maybe it could be taught. Like, I don't know. Just, like, I feel like it needs to be, like, more brought up. Because I, like, really haven't, like, learned about it in school. Mm -hmm. But I'm we're out of, school. It, like, out of school. Like, we're out of school June, uh, June 19th, so it's, like, kind of hard to touch yeah. on it. Yeah. Well, Smart. one thing that I've tried to do is to help teachers and young people um, by writing a play. 
Mm -hmm. I wrote a play almost 30 years ago, and it's called Kumbaya, the Juneteenth Story. And I can't believe it. It's just as relevant now as it was then. So we're going to be doing that play in just a few weeks. But we took the play to Duluth, Minnesota, and they wanted it at the beginning of the school year, which was really a great way to think about it, where mm -hmm. the students now were coming back to school and they were looking on stage and seeing people who look like them, young people who look like them, and hearing about something that impacted them. Mm -hmm. So that's one way that we're trying to do some things, but a lot of the communities now are commemorating Juneteenth, so there's lots of stuff to do. Right. Somebody called me the other day and said, do you know that I counted over 25 events that are going on right around the Twin Cities around Juneteenth? So what do you think you want to do this year? What are you going to do? Definitely swim, barbecue, eat. And go to my play. Oh, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. All right, let's 100%. get that in. Sure, OK. <laughs> so uh, one more question before you go, and that is, what about um, friends, especially white friends of yours? How are they embracing this whole thing around Juneteenth? Been any conversation mm. about it at all? Um, I don't know, because I feel like in the society we are today, it's more of a, you know, if it doesn't apply to me, it doesn't matter. So it's very hard, especially like when you're coming from a predominantly white institution. It's like Juneteenth, okay, well, if I have black friends, it's like, okay, well, you know, happy Juneteenth, you know, mm. continue on with their day. Mm. You know, if you invite them over, if your family's having a barbecue and stuff, that's nice. But I feel like it's something that it's really just overlooked, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you know, what is it, what is it even mean, you know? Yeah. So it's just like, how do they feel? Um, that's a great question. Yeah. I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> yeah. But that's from funny. how I feel, I feel it's just something like, oh, it doesn't apply to me, you know? I know it's important to them over here, but it doesn't really qualify for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's kind of like overlooked a little bit, especially because it's not really like taught in school. Yeah. as much and a lot of kids really only know like about it if it's brung up like somewhere like I feel like it's like it's like more of like a deeper meaning and like not a lot of people like really know like mm -hmm. what it really means they just know it's like some people know it's just like oh it's just like a barbecue it's kind of just like Juneteenth you know and then it's kind of just like oh well yeah yeah, yeah. oh well well I want to tell you um it is deeper right of course we know that right and especially with things that are going on every day. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it from this perspective, here black people in this country had been enslaved. And then Abraham Lincoln signs this thing called the Emancipation Proclamation, mm -hmm. freeing them, right? And the idea that one part of this nation decided we're not honoring that. And they didn't for over two years. So the idea now that people are getting the news of their freedom, can you imagine that? Um, I don't know that people had time to be angry about how long it took because they were so jubilant over the fact that they were now free. Right. right? So when you think about that and what freedom means, I'd like you, if you can think of one word that comes to mind for you, what is freedom? If you can think of one word, and we'll close it out on that. Freedom for you, what does that mean? I would say self-righteousness. Self-righteousness, thank you. Freedom to me, I would say is being able to um, like justify a situation or something like that like being able to just like have like everyone like equal you know mm. and like everyone to get along everyone to get along i really invite you to join us on friday june 16th at breck school in golden valley for two shows of kumbaya the juneteenth story written by rose mcgee directed by leonard searcy and rosalind Harmon. The play will be absolutely free, thanks to Minnesota Humanities Center, who is partnering with Sweet Potato Comfort Pie. We invite you to also come early enough for the pre 
reception, or for the pre-show reception, which begins at 5.30. But the show starts at 7 o'clock, and there's also one in the morning at 10 a.m. So to register, so that we can have a handle on who's coming, go to our website at sweetpotatocomfortpie.org, or go to the Minnesota Humanities website and register to attend. See you then.